Yeah, you weren't expecting this one, were you? That's right, we're going to do a little mini list here for you. Five songs that should have been huge. Five songs that were destined and had all the ingredients to be a massive smash hit, but somehow never happened for whatever reason. But here we are to talk about some songs here that I think should have been top in the charts should have been massive, massive streams on all streaming platforms, but never seemed to happen or materialise. We all know these types of songs. There's always a dozen, maybe even more, every year that you go, man, what's going on? Why can't this be huge? Why couldn't this top the charts? Why are some really mediocre songs be getting really super popular, but then this has everything in its power to be a really accessible, well-liked song, and yet it just never happens. And we all know that there's multitude of reasons as to why this can happen. Maybe it could be the record labels, maybe just the way the song's marketed, or maybe just the fact that the artist isn't quite on the level of being big enough. That's just holding them back. And that's not to criticize or attack all pop music and say that everything popular is bad because I don't really subscribe to that belief. I really think that attitude can be quite pretentious, but let's not also forget that, you know, sometimes we just do not know why songs don't become big because there's so many out there. Honestly, this could be its own series. I could do so many videos talking about so many different types of songs that should have been huge from all kinds of eras in the music world. And I might even do that if this one has enough popularity and people enjoy it enough to see more because there's so many songs out there that fit this bill and before I even get into it you should be letting me know what you ha would have as your choices in the comments what you think should have been huge what you think are my picks and of course check out my patreon as well because you can request your own videos like this if you subscribe on the uh, the tiers if you're on the tiers you can decide your own videos make requests for your own videos in the future coming from me and be part of the discord server too Wait. Starting with Lord's Greenlight. Now, technically, this was a bit of a minor hit and did make it into the charts. So, you know, it did have its due in some kind of capacity and probably is the biggest charting song out of all the songs I'm going to pick on this list. However, when it's a song that just has everything about it that seems like it could appeal to the widest demographic and when you factor in how big lord's first album was with the amount of hits that came from that one you've just kind of got to scratch your head a little bit and wonder how the hell this song only seemed to like peak at what 20 in the uk and like 19 in the us i believe just the mind boggles like there is just something so strange about how a melodrama as a whole actually didn't commercially do anywhere near as well and yeah you could argue that it has everything about it that is more accessible than her first album. It's baffling, it's strange. Green Light feels so powerful as, um, I guess, like a, a statement of a song. Like, it just feels so big. The build has so much purpose to it. Like, you're not just reaching a point of the track where it's just a bit like, ah, it was underwhelming. No, actually, it builds up so nicely with the pianos onto such a fantastic chorus. It is really, really good. And maybe the slightest niggle with this track that maybe held it back was the fact that it probably takes a little too long to build to that point. And maybe radio stations, you know, struggle to maintain it because maybe people will just turn it off after the first 30 seconds because you might just think it's a bit boring. I don't know, though. That's not held back Olivia Rodrigo's Vampire, and that's a similar song where actually it starts pretty slow but builds. So I don't really get it. I don't really get it. It's always been a bit of an odd one for me. I don't really know why. I think it's really, really relatable as a track, too. I mean, some of the lines are a bit corny where she's like, we do, we order different drinks at the same bar. Like, it's a, bit, it's a bit... Come on, come on. Everyone does that. But aside from that, I think the overall package is a really good song here. And... It should have been huge. This should be an anthem for the 2010s. And it is for a lot of people. A lot of people do love this track. And a lot of people do love Lord. And a lot of people love melodrama. But on a commercial level, it still doesn't feel like this song got its due. And I find it quite strange. If I had to pick one song for this video rather than picking five, this would be the one 
to me that I would go with and go, how the hell was this not a hit? Because this is always one that comes to mind for me. Um, I mean, first of all, let's talk about this one, Americans. This didn't even chart on the Billboard Hot 100. It only charted at 58 in the UK, so that's not exactly anything to be bragging about either, but at least it bloody charted. What, what are you, let's talk about that one, Americans. What the hell were you doing there? Something about this track not being as massive song, and a lot of people still to this day that I see are like, oh my god, the Call Me Maybe girl's still making music, and it's like, you're joking, you're joking. You're joking. She's been putting out bangers ever since Call Me Maybe. And this is probably the best one. One of the best ones for sure. And I just don't get it. It is so euphoric. It's so blissful. It's so impactful. That that crash when the chorus hits is just a rush through the veins. It is pure, pure joy. And her vocals are stunning, as they often are in most of her tracks. You could honestly do a whole list of Carly Rae Jepsen songs because she has everything in her to be one of the biggest pop stars in the world. It, I saw a tweet the other day actually that was really funny where it's like I cannot quantify Carly's success because to me it seems like everyone on on the internet loves her and everyone every reviewer critic raves about her music but then whenever you talk to people in real life like it's like they only know that one song. And it is, it is baffling because it does feel like there is something about her that could be massive and yet it just isn't. It's so hard to really quantify where she stands in the music industry. I don't get it. I really don't. I think if she was topping the charts, she'd be the best out at the moment, but she never seems to. And yeah, songs like this just, just boggle my brain, baffle my brain because I just don't get how it wasn't a massive hit. The marketing could have been part of the issue here. Possibly the marketing with all these songs could be the issue, but I really like you being the lead single. Just is really silly. Um, I, I think that was just a huge misfire. It did okay for her. It was in the charts, but I, I think this could have been the better lead single, really. I think I really like you was trying to replicate Call Me Maybe Success. It was too obvious that she was trying to do that kind of cutesy um, song again and it just didn't work. Whereas this one feels mature. It feels so, you know, lost and like hopeless romanticism in a hopeless romanticism type way. I mean, when I say mature, it sounds mature in its sound, but the lyrics are sort of like hopeless romanticism and it's so... Again, quite quite nice and relatable for particularly a lot of young people. It, this one, yeah, baffles me. I want to mention this next one as probably the least recognisable name on the list and also the least recognisable song on the list. Although, depending on how familiar you are with music, I think you'll know this song because... It has made it onto some soundtracks. I'm pretty sure it's on a FIFA soundtrack, which is quite funny to think of. And it also made it on the book Smart Film, which was the point in which I was like, oh yeah, this could have been massive because it fit quite nicely into the soundtrack and into the scene of the film. And that was when I was thinking when I watched that film, how big this song has the potential to be. And then when you watch the success of Running Up That Hill and Stranger Things and how they used it, it kind of hit me again and I was like, well, hang on, if this was used in a way like that, not to say that it's the same as Kate Bush, although Perfume Genius is actually quite an obvious uh, influencee of Kate, as he's talked about before and as he's referenced her music before in his own music, um, you could kind of see there's parallels there, but I do think there is potential for this to be used in a film or to be used in a TV show and make it just become absolutely viral. And there is a lot about this track that I see that for. But even still, this is such a stunning track. The music, the vocals, the lyrics again, the writing on all of these tracks I mentioned so far are really strong. So... I guess pop music doesn't sound like this at the moment. There isn't anything in the charts that's really sounded like this over the past few years. But if it was used right, there is something in this, man. I could see it. My, my, my camera's shaking all over the place. I'm getting too excited. I could see it. I could see Slip Away being a super viral track with millions and millions of streams. And it's a shame we haven't seen it yet. But I've got faith. Knocked my camera again because I'm getting excited, but I've got faith.
Okay, we are following a bit of a theme with some of these artists here. Another artist that has had previous hits and was pretty recognisable as a name, but then suddenly somehow just started to lose grasp of the pop culture and popularity and didn't have as many hits later on. To be fair to Charlie, she probably brought it on herself with the fact that she went a bit weirder and a bit more experimental. The music got fantastic, so I'm not attacking her at all. But you can't really expect songs like... I don't friggin' know. Uh, anything from Pop 2 being a hit, basically. Um, although I think some of them since TikTok's birth have become quite popular through that. So there is potential. And the fact that Charlie at the moment is currently in the charts with Speed Drive has always made me think that there was potential for this track to be bigger than it was. And somehow... The album actually produced a few hits, like especially in the UK, we did see some tracks from this album make their way into the charts, and for some reason this one didn't, and I don't get it, I don't get it, I think this is probably up there with the like, best tracks ever, for me, I've always loved this track, it was high on my year end list, and I think, yeah, it, there is potential for this. I think there was a viral moment for this track at some point on TikTok as well. So I guess it has got recognizability and it's not totally obscure. And Charlie as an artist isn't obscure at all. But yeah, I wanted to include this one because I just think I've always felt alone in championing how, championing how good it actually is. Uh, to the point where I think it makes sense to hear this on the radio. You know, it's got that kind of like... Um, I don't know how to describe it, but it's got that like command in the way that she's singing. Of course, Christina and the Queens is on this, which is excellent. It's a great feature. Uh, but yeah, it's got like this command to it that I feel like would instantaneously grab your attention. And if you were just kind of out and about and you heard this come on, even if you never heard it in your life, I think it would instantaneously make you kind of just pull you in and go, ah, I, I'm with this. But yeah, maybe again... We can see more hits coming from Charlie and maybe we'll just never see this one be big. But I always thought it could have been big. Okay, I am self-aware here and I think I've probably been babbling on and waffling on for a lot of time with each of these tracks. I hope you have stuck with me and I hope you're enjoying my spiels and my pledges for these songs to be bigger than they are. But I do want to end on Rina Sawayama. This isn't in any particular order, by the way. So her being last is, you know, just through the fact that the video has lined up that way. And I do want to mention how she's similar to Carly in that you could mention 10 other songs by her and it would still make sense. You could go all the way back to the first EP and say all of those songs. But I wanted to mention this hell, mostly for the fact that I think with that relatability factor that I mentioned already, there is that same spin with this track too, with the fact that it is very much focused on um, her being, you know, part of the LGBT uh, plus community. Um, and the song itself references being LGBT and has this tongue in cheek sort of silly, silly, uh, you know, you can see where I'm coming from with what I'm trying to get at with these lyrics sort of narrative on this track about essentially being, you know, sent to hell, but it's actually good to be sent to hell if you're gay or bisexual, etc., etc. So I think from that angle, there is quite a huge audience for a song like this to be massive. And I will say that in terms of how it sounds, it sounds fantastic. This is one of my favourite songs of the entirety of last year. I think in terms of singles, Rena is up where, there with some of the best around, honestly, like lead singles especially. She's so good at getting them right. And yet, you never see them in the charts. And I don't get why. And I don't get it because it seems like in terms of her commercial success, her albums have only been doing better and better and better with each release. But yeah, somehow the singles just aren't making any impact and I don't really get why. I think this song had everything about it to be a chart-topping single but somehow didn't manage to do it. I think we probably haven't quite seen the peak of her powers yet because it does take some artists quite a few years to get to that point where you're making a top 40 single. Because let's not forget how hard it actually is to break into the top 40 in general, by the way. It ain't some easy thing that anybody can just do. The vast majority of artists would die to see one of their songs just make it into the charts somehow. 
and so many millions and millions of musicians out there will never see that happen to themselves so you know i am aware of the fact that this isn't an easy thing to do but when you are making music as good as this and as accessible as this like rena sawayama is doing and having such personality and charisma to go along with it and great videos and aesthetics and looks and an image a recognizable image that separates her from other artists too and an artsiness to her as well. Like, you kind of just have to look and go, wow, there is something there. She could be massive. So, yeah, that is it from me. These are all of the five songs that I have bloody gone on and on and on and on and on and on about. So thank you before I continue going on and on and on even further for watching this video. And I hope you've enjoyed what I've had to say and I hope you've agreed somewhat with what I've had to say throughout this video as well. Please tell me what you think of these picks. I, like I say, I quite like the idea of continuing this and making this more of a thing in the future. So if you want to see more like this, please tell me in the comments because I could keep going. You could request your own in the comments and I might talk about those in other videos because trust me, this could be a very, very long, long series of different songs because there's so many out there that should have been huge. And let's hope I've at least brought you to you brought to your attention one new song that you hadn't heard before because that would be pretty cool as well so please tell me your thoughts on these songs what you'd pick and have a good day subscribe check out my patreon and goodbye